I just wanted to share with you a little bit of a blessing that I got this week and that is having some really good bargain on potatoes. Don't you guys remember that I just told you about a week ago that I used up the last of my potatoes and my potatoes aren't ready for harvest for another month? Well, look what I got for one dollar each. Where the sharp shopper had a skit of these for one dollar each. Ten pound bags of potatoes. Now, we tried to pick out the potatoes that don't have any of the eyes sprouting. We did really well. My granddaughters were with me. So many of you ask me, how in the world do I keep potatoes from going bad when I don't even use air conditioning? Well, I'm going to show you today how I do it. So right here, I have 50 pounds of potatoes. 50 pounds of potatoes for $5. I don't think you can get any cheaper than that. In fact, even growing them, I don't know if you could get any cheaper than that. I'm going to share with you how I can make my potatoes last a long time. Now, my potatoes that I harvest, they will last all winter long because it is much cooler. So these summer potatoes here won't last quite as long. But hey, if they get too sprouted, all I have to do is can them or you can freeze them. I'm looking to get one of those French fryers. You know, it's a thing that you can cut and make your potatoes look like French fries. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a video of me freezing them. I don't have much freezer space, but I think a couple gallon bags of these french fry potatoes would be amazing. So I'll show you what I'm working on. First thing I have to do is I have to apologize to you if it's really dark. I can't help it because this is my dark room. Now this is a screened out porch. So in the winter time it doesn't freeze because we still have an oil furnace for our shower. That's the only hot water we have is for our shower. So when the oil furnace runs, it keeps it from freezing here, but it gets very cold. You cannot store any canned goods anywhere that it gets freezing temperature. Your jars will burst. But I'm fortunate enough to have this set up. I'm going to share with you my new best friends when it comes to homesteading. These are little metal buckets with lids and they sell for $14 and that includes the shipping. I love these things. This is how I store my potatoes. What you have to understand is potatoes love it dark. You have to have it dark. And I have a really big, a big bucket right here. <laughs> it's so dark. but. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the potatoes out of here that were in the bottom. So we have a couple potatoes left that are sprouted. We don't want to put our new potatoes on top of these. So I'm going to go ahead and put these into the small metal bucket. Now we're ready to go. So all I have to do is dump all of these potatoes that I got for a dollar a bag into this metal bucket. And I'll get back to you in a second. So now what we do is we put the locking lid on it. If it's really humid, I will let it ajar just a little bit to get some ventilation. But normally I put the lid on. This is a really dry room. Like I said, if it's a little humid, as you can see, I'm sweating profusely. I just put it ajar. So there you go. I hope that answers your question. And what I like to do is, I have a door here which has ventilation, but there's a curtain. I always close this curtain when I'm not filming or using this room for any kind of projects. I would close this curtain and it's dark. I do have a little light here that I can use when I need to. But so many people ask me this question all the time. 
Tessie, how do you store your food when you don't have air condition? There's an assumption that because you have a hot house, your jars aren't going to seal. My jars will get, this room here, will get to be 92 to 93 degrees at the highest. I've never had a jar pop open because of the heat. You just want to keep it dark. Dark, dark, dark. Dark, no sunlight. And also, you should have some ventilation in your room. You should have some kind of little window. A unused bedroom is perfect. Have a dark, unused bedroom and have a window open. Ventilation is really key. So, I hope this answered a few questions, and I can't wait to see you guys on Sunday. Bye, everybody! <laughs> So the title of this video is Amish Food Storage Techniques. And while most of the Amish do have root cellars, or they have cellars under their house, which makes it cooler, some of us don't have that option. And I have a decade, more than a decade of experience with food storage in a condition where you don't have controlled temperature. And so I have found that I do not ever have any problems with my jars not sealing. I don't have any problems with my jars not staying preserved even in temperatures of 93 to 95 degrees. Now my house never gets hotter than 95 or 93 but I've never had these issues. So I want to share with you once again being in the dark and having your food in the dark and having some kind of form of ventilation is very key. So you want to have air movement and you want to have the darkness. I don't have problems with my potatoes rotting, apples or anything like that as long as it is dark and we have some airflow. Also a lot of people ask me so many times about canned goods and the shelf life. All canned food has about the same shelf life if you canned it properly and have proper methods of doing so. If you store it properly as well. Your canned goods can last five years or longer. I don't like eating food that is older than five years simply because I want to make sure that I rotate my inventory by that time. But I have already consumed food from 2012 in just the last month because I accidentally found a jar here and there that was older. The only thing I could say is you maybe would lose a little of your nutrition value but really sunlight is your number one enemy for canned food. You don't want to have sunlight. So I hope this answers some of your questions because many of you ask this often and I really wanted to have a video sharing all of this in one video that I can point you to it in the future. There's a lot of things I don't know about in life and a lot of things about off-grid living and things like that but one thing I do feel like I know a lot about that is canning and preserving food because I've done it now for over 32 years.